All right, man. We are live. Yo, I've been really excited about this, man. I'm 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 really, really, really excited to connect with you, Andrew. I know uh we know each other kind of from afar because we run in some of the same circles, but um, you know, I, I know a, a little bit about your story, probably just enough to be dangerous. But uh uh welcome to the show, man. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, thanks for having me, Mike. You're welcome, brother. Let's uh let's dive right in. I don't I, I tell everybody this. I, I won't spend a, a whole heck of a lot of time on on your past, but I will ask you a couple questions just to kind of set the stage um, for folks to to try to get uh, uh, draw some context on on where you're at in your business in hopes that again they they might be able to connect with you. So, um, tell me how long have you been doing it, man? How long have you been in real estate now? I've been in real estate uh, just shy of five years. Okay, so you got licensed five years ago, and what were you doing before you got into real estate? Uh, I was doing investment banking uh, for about six years out of college in San Francisco, New York. So mostly uh, mergers and acquisitions. Okay. And I, I'm just going to take a wild guess that you ended up in real estate because of your family, right? Yeah. So uh, my dad started our team and been a realtor for uh, since 82. So uh, longer than I've been alive and told myself I would never do real estate. And uh, he, he was sort of gearing me toward not doing real estate. Uh, but yeah, family business. My mom has been a admin or a, you know, assistant for a long time. My sister had a, uh, a job for about a year out of Texas A&M and then been with my dad ever since. And she's older than me. So she had been on the team for uh, some time before I got on the team. So yeah, family business is an understatement. Got it. And so you, 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 you fought it as long as you could. Right. And then, and then you finally got sucked in, um, doing investment banking. I can imagine, um, that's not a boring job. Uh, it's definitely, I, I'm sure that kept you, it kept you busy. I'm, I'm, I'm curious though, what was, what was the final straw that, that said, okay, all right, you know, dad, I'm going to do this. Like I, I'm going to leave my investment banking job or, or whatever you were doing at the time. And, and I'm going full bore into real estate. What was, what kind of, what, what changed for you? Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, I went to college away from, from Texas where I grew up, Houston, and uh, went to college in Virginia, and then I was in San Francisco and then New York. And so for me, honestly, it doesn't sound that sexy, but it was a location thing. Um, I enjoyed what I was doing in, in investment banking. I, I didn't really have an opinion one way or another on real estate, but I wanted to be back in Houston uh close to family, which is all where my family was. And, uh, you know, I was getting a little burnt out. I was working 80, 90 hours a week for, for a long time in investment banking. I enjoyed it a lot, but uh, ultimately got a little burned out and wanted to be closer to home. And so real estate was the best way to, to get a good job uh, closer to home, doing the family business. And it was about the time my dad was ready to, to start taking more of a back seat in the business. So, it was more of a timing and location thing than my desire to be in real estate, to be honest with you. Gotcha. That makes sense. And so, okay. So you, you, you were like, all right, I'm, I'm jumping into real estate and, and well, you know, a side note is the money's not bad either. Right? <laughs> no, no. And, and, and stepping into a, a, one of the top teams in the country that my, my dad and some other folks uh, that have been with them for a long time have created not a, not a bad uh, uh, situation to get myself into. Not at all, man. So that's a great segue into it. So, so tell us a little bit about like your production in 2017 and where you think you guys will go this year. Yeah. So uh, in 17, uh, we did 629 transactions for uh, just over 220 million. Um, we were behind for the beginning of, of this year, but we are now uh, beating last year pace wise. And so we're hoping we do, we're hoping we hit 700 transactions and hoping to do in excess of 240 million. So we're on that 10 to 15% growth trajectory as it stands right now. Yeah. Do you think you guys got a little behind because of inventory? Maybe not so much because of performance? Uh, yeah. I mean, it was a weird for us with Harvey in Houston. Um, it was a weird, you know, we had a, a very slow fourth quarter um, as far as uh, new things coming on. And it took a while, I think, for the market to pick back up post Harvey. So sure. I think that had a lot to do with it, uh, was market centric things related to Harvey. Um, you know, performance wise, I don't, you know, we were still, our agents were doing well. We had the same agent count. 
Um, so I don't think it was that. I think it was more market specific uh, activity. Okay. Okay. So, so and you guys are back on track. It looks like you're going to uh, surpass your number. Three. Um, um, how is your team currently structured? Like, how many agents do you guys have? What does your admin staff look like? Yeah. So we have uh, 24 total team members. Um, with my dad, who's not a full on producer anymore, he's still involved uh, from a consulting perspective. We have, including him, we have 12 agents, 12 licensed agents that produce, or 11 and then him. Um, and then we have six or seven licensed staff. And then we have, um, you know, receptionist, uh, a runner, a full time runner, as well as uh, three business development reps who really focus on our, our builder relationships. So I think that's roughly 23, 24 people. Okay. And how many do you, that's interesting. You, you talk about the builders. Um, is, I'm assuming that must be a, a, a very integral part of your business then, your building. Yeah, it's, it is. It's, it's a good percentage. It's, it's probably about 50% of, of our business is, is some programs uh, we have to builders. You know, if we can't sell a house, we'll buy it uh, if, it's, if it's not sold by the time the new house is complete. So we've been, we've had builder programs um, like that for about 18 years now. Um, so we have relationships uh, with a lot of the top builders around either one of, or the only preferred realtor with a lot of the builders. So um, we partner with them to help them, you know, sell more homes um, and eliminate contingencies basically. Okay, that's awesome, man. And, and so talk, talk to me about then, Everybody has, this is my favorite part, by the way, um, is, is really digging into kind of the, the, the logistics of, uh, especially a team your size, when you make a move, it's like, it's not, you know, it's not turning around a speedboat, it's turning around the Titanic. So there are a lot of, uh, of different uh, decisions that go into making a move like this for you guys when you're transitioning from, you know, a Remax over to an EXP. So I'm curious, like, when you guys... Tell me about like when you first heard about this whole idea of EXP and then what, 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 how did you respond to that? Yeah, I mean, early, I would say it was probably a year and a half to two years ago. Someone sort of casually mentioned it. Um, we didn't even entertain it. I didn't know it was cloud based. I didn't know there was revenue share or stock. I, I knew nothing about it. So it was mentioned to us. I think someone sent a presentation deck to us and it was one of those, hey, we're, we're we're trucking along. We're growing uh, since we took over from my dad, and and so didn't really consider it at all. Um, didn't I, I would say we didn't spend five minutes on on looking because we weren't really looking at anything um, from a brokerage chain's perspective. Um, and then you know in the last six months, nine months, um, you know we we really have a good core of of agents on the team. The the business is trucking along. Uh, better than it has been. And we, we were not really trying to fix anything uh, like we had been um, with the business. I mean, you're always trying to improve, but uh, we were pretty much, you know, running with, you know, all cylinders going. And uh, we just started exploring options on, okay, what is, what is our, you know, we were paying about a hundred grand a year to Remax. What is that getting for us? Uh, and so we just started looking Broadly speaking, we discussed uh, going independent. We discussed going other brokerages. We discussed starting our own Remax or buying one. Um, so we sort of looked at the whole gamut of stuff. And I actually mentioned this to my coach at the time, um, Fred Weaver. Uh, him and his partner, Kevin Kaufman, uh, run a, a, a big successful team across multiple states, headquartered or based out of Arizona doing similar volume numbers at us. And I just, I sort of casually mentioned, Hey, I'm exploring looking. And it was ironically enough, that coaching call was the day he told me, Hey, you know, I just got approval. We haven't told all of our employees yet, uh, but we're moving over to, to EXP. Um, and it, the timing was, it was weird the, the day he told me that, was a day I emailed a couple of my partners and my dad saying, I keep hearing about this EXP thing. I'm gonna go find out uh, what local broker, you know, who's the local broker. I, I, that's how little I knew at the time. I, I thought they had a local broker that I would go talk to or create our own office. Um, and then, you know, Kevin and Fred and, and then Curtis, who 
who was their sponsor, uh, you know, were very helpful, just giving me the information so I could get smart on, on, on the decision. We're, we're very thoughtful when it comes to, you know, numbers and fees and upside. And so we, we, we looked at the model uh, pretty extensively for a while, um, but I would say more on a logistics perspective. And what I mean by that is once we saw the model, um, someone, Trisha Turner, who, who uh, recently announced she, she's coming over as another a good producer, had her own independent brokerage. I heard on, a, on an announcement that he said, once you see the model, you can't unsee it. Yep. Um, that's sort of how we felt. Uh, once we actually saw the different ways you could earn money, the way you can collaborate, partner um, with people across the state uh, and across the country, um, we were pretty intrigued by that because we've, we've taken our buyout program to other cities and hadn't figured out a way to do it in other markets. Um, and so once we saw that, uh, we knew we were making the change months before we made the change. And then it was, okay, are we going to lose our 130 listings? Are we going to lose any? Are we going to, are any of our builder clients going to care? Are any of our agents going to care? So mm -hmm. all of those three buckets were important diligence uh, items we had. We all had an idea where those were going to go and, and, and turn out, but we wanted to do the homework, have those conversations. Um, and so I would say we, we made the decision pretty quickly after seeing the model and doing a little bit of research, but it just took us some time to make sure what we thought was the case was the case. That makes sense. Man, that's that's awesome. That, there's a lot to unpack there. I want to rewind just a little bit and talk to you first about because um, it sounds like maybe that, that um, there was some sort of a transition maybe over like the last year or two and you were working more um, on the business and didn't really when you heard about EXP, you didn't really have time or you didn't you, you just weren't in a place to acknowledge that at the time because of some some other things that were going on. Is that right? Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, I if the person that showed me would have showed me uh, Uber or Google, I, mean, I would have just, you know, not looked at it. It was it was more of a timing. It was not it had no reflection on EXP or the individual. It was all timing uh, of it. You know, it could have been that day um, and then it was never followed up on, on it. And so I forgot about it. Okay. And then once I started hearing more and more people and then more and more producers across the country doing it, uh, that's when I was like, okay, I got to pay attention to this thing and, and at least take a look at it, especially when it was people like Kevin and Fred, who I, I trust and, and really respect um, their business and what they've done and, and how they've helped our business uh, in the coaching capacity. And so once that happened, that's when I was like, okay, I, I need to actually sort of pay attention to this and at least figure out if it's a fit for us or not. Yeah. And, and just so you know, guys, um, he's talking about uh, Kevin Kaufman, Fred, Fred Weaver. They did our show, I think, three weeks ago. Um, and they're with the 4610 group came over from Keller Williams, probably the third or fourth largest team at Keller Williams. Um, but anyway, yeah, man, great guys. Um, OK, so for, for you, then obviously and then the timing became right. And then obviously you connected with Fred and Kevin through some some coaching and uh, did your did your diligence and, and got through all that. So when you guys when you when you went from from, you know, not knowing to doing your doing your diligence and then being in the know, what what tell me about what happens at that point? I mean, you gather that your group of leadership and, and then you guys talk about how you're going to make the transition or tell me that story. Yeah. So uh, initially, um, you know, now I run the business with with two partners, my sister, Sarah, and another partner that had been with my dad for about 10 years, Andy Gleason. So we're, we're now partners in the company. So the first thing I did was, you know, I remember telling Kevin and Fred, I'm like, I love this thing. I'm, I'm, I'm doing it, but we got to make sure everyone else is doing it as well, because I'm not the only one calling the shots or, or running it. And so uh, what we initially did was, uh, you know, I tried to get them smart on it and, and show them what I show, what I was showed and see their thoughts. I mean, we, the, the great thing, we work really well together, the three of us, but we also have different opinions sometimes. And so, you know, if they didn't buy into it, they didn't see the value, we weren't going to do it. So that, that's the first thing we did was, was make sure the four of us, my dad included, thought it was a good idea. My dad has been with Remax for 30 years. 
Yeah. Um, we were very, very happy with our brokers. We love them. We're friends with them to, to the, to this day. Um, but we were, we were there with them for 10 years in, in, in that specific Remax franchise. So once the four of us were on board, it was more confirming that our builder clients wouldn't care and our agents were on board. Um, so it was really confirming the people that matter to our business, our agents, our builder clients were okay with the change and they were more the Franklin team rather than the Franklin team at Remax. Um, so we wanted to, we thought that was the case, but we wanted to confirm that. Once, once we confirmed that with our biggest builder clients and our, uh, our agents on the Franklin team, we were full steam ahead from there. Then it was just switching licenses over, getting logos changed, you know, marketing stuff. But um, those were the two biggest items for us. I think it's unique to everyone's business. What's important to them? What's important to their business? The last thing you want to do is have a big business, change a brokerage for the upside and your business go from 600 deals to 300 deals. Yeah. So we wanted to make sure that was not going to happen before we made the change. And of our 130 listings, every single one transferred over. Mm -hmm. um, not one builder client cared. As a matter of fact, some didn't even know we were with Remax um, and we had been their <laughs> client for for like 15 years. A couple of them, we made the told them we were going to EXP, told them a little bit about the model, and they said, "That's fine. We're as long as the programs and the relationship is with you guys." Um, are you guys leaving Remax or Keller Williams? A couple of them, no jokingly, said that to us. And these were these were relationships that we've spent a long time with, that they knew us intimately, and they didn't know where our brokerage sit is at. So once we confirmed that, it was a pretty big deal for us that we knew that it wasn't going to affect our business. We were going to continue to grow if we did the same things, and it it wasn't Remax. It was it was more what we were doing. So isn't that interesting? It's like you know, we have this conversation with people all the time because, you know, if you think about it, I mean, consumers, they really don't do business with with the brokerage. They do business with us. Right. I mean, they're, when you when you go to a listing appointment, if you're sitting down with a with a seller, uh, you're not you're not telling them unless you're a new agent what your company did. You're usually telling them either what yourself or or, or your team did. Right. It's and. Sure. And I always ask, I say, you know, if you went back to, let's just say your last 10 clients, right? If you went back to your last 10 clients and you asked them what company you worked for, how many of them would, would be able to tell you the answer to that question? And, and you just you just confirmed it, right? Most of them could not tell you the answer to that question because they did business with you. They didn't do business yeah. with, you know, Keller Williams or Coldwell Banker or Berkshire Hathaway or any of those companies. They did business with you. So I'm happy to hear you bring that up because I think that, you know, that's been that's been obviously something that other agents have brought up. Well, I've never heard of EXP or what if, what if the consumers never heard of EXP? So, you know, you just you just kind of confirm that for us. Um, another thing I wanted to ask you about is uh, so th when this decision is made in the leadership group and, and it sounds like, you know, um, you guys are very proactive. In other words, you don't waste a lot of time. If you find a good idea, you're 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 all about implementation. So when this idea comes in and your leadership group comes together and you guys make the decision, how did you approach like the team? Well, we, we, uh, we have uh, agents across the city and it's, it's hard to get them all. I mean, they're all uh, good producers. I mean, we, we really have uh, 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 of the 11 of us that are producing, everyone is busy and producing and, and not struggling to, to make it work. And so, um, it's tough for us to all get in the same room. A couple people were on vacation. And, and so um, we did individual phone calls uh, with, with each agent. Love but it. for us, the opportunity was uh, the, one, of the, one of the selling points for us was that EXP was rather unknown um, because we saw the model and, and we sort of saw the writing on the wall that this is going to get big. It's not a matter of if, just when. And so you had my dad chirping uh, us in the ear, like, you better get going. This is going to take off. And, and we, we want to capitalize on, on getting some of those people over uh, that may not have heard of it. And so once we made the decision, it was like, we better hurry up because 
at, at least in Houston, um, it's relatively small. I mean, there's 40,000 realtors in Houston and, and there's at, at least at the time we went maybe 300 EXP agents. So for us, we saw that as a big opportunity. And so um, we wanted to hurry up. So what we did was we did individual phone calls, made sure all the agents were on board. Everyone was, was either neutral um, or very, you know, I would say six or eight of them were very, they saw the upside that they had, that they could uh, achieve that they didn't have at Remax. And so most everyone on the team was, was more than on board. They were excited for it, that we were willing to, to get out of something that was not only good for us, uh, but was good for them. So we, I, I think we had calls with them. And then a couple of days later, we started transferring over licenses. Man, that's awesome. And one thing that you said that really stood out to me is the fact that your dad, the 30 year Remax veteran is like, you better get going, man. Cause you know, it, you saw like what we saw. It's like, why didn't you, then you start kicking yourself, right? You're like, why didn't I do this like two or three years ago? It's like, yeah. then you start doing the math on, on, you know, on the stock and the revenue share and you're like, Oh, you're kicking yourself. But you, you know, you're yeah. right. We're still a young company. We're, you know, um, 15,000 agents, let's say, and we, there's still so much opportunity. And I agree with you, by the way, I think that it's not, it's not a matter of, of if it's just a matter of when it will be the largest real estate company in the United States. And then eventually uh, around the world. So, um, but you know, point being is there's still really a lot of opportunity for not just you and I, cause we're, we've already made the transition, but for other agents who potentially, are, are still thinking about or doing their research with EXP, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a huge opportunity. I mean, just look at the numbers, number of agents nationally and globally and look at the number of agents that Remax and Keller Williams have. And 15,000 is, is a rounding error for these guys. So although I really wish we made the decision when I initially saw it two years ago, it is super early. And, and I think there's, there is still a lot, this is going, I mean, it's the, the growth is not slowing down. Um, and I, I think it's going to take a while for it to slow down. So I, I think there's a, lo a lot of opportunity left um, just, just here locally, uh, but also nationally and more. I mean, they're not even in a, a lot of different countries. Um, I mean, I, I think they're in Canada. Um, I don't think they're, Mexico, Latin America, any of that. And so I, I think it's got a lot of, lot of uh, upside. Um, although I do wish I got into it about a year or two ago. Um, but I, I think there's a lot of upside for anyone considering it. Uh, I met with someone earlier today and, and uh, he was saying, uh, nice, you know, successful one year realtor that's already killing it. And, and, you know, he's, he's already got that urgency because he saw the model. And so I think there's a ton of upside. Uh, you know, if, if, if I didn't think so, we wouldn't have made the choice. I mean, it's only been three weeks for us. Right. What do you, I, the, a question just popped in my head and I don't think I've ever asked this before, but what, what do you, what do you think the fallout is for traditional brokerages with, with models like this? Do you, or do you think there's any at all? Fallout and what? What do you what do you mean by like, that? You think this destroys the traditional brokerage model eventually? I, I mean, I've I've been saying this to people. Uh, I think the only way to compete with this is if someone wants to be at a discount brokerage and they're so fixed on paying a hundred dollars a fee. Um, I think if you really really look into this as a Remax or Keller Williams agent and you really understand the model. I don't know how you go to those other two. Um, that that's truly my opinion. Like some of these other ones, like Colwell Banker and Century Twenty One, they get some reload deals. But Keller Williams, personally, they do a lot of training. Exp has that. Uh, the brand, the balloon that Remax has. I don't. I don't think that really matters. To be completely, I, we love Remax. We loved our local brokers. But switching over 130 listings and not one person caring, it's not the balloon that matters. So I think if someone really dives into this as a Remax or Keller Williams agent and, and is objective and will actually listen, um, I think it's a no brainer, honestly. And I, I, I do think unless those models change and I don't know how they're going to change because they're so committed to the brick and mortar 
model that they have because a lot of these local owners have leases or ownership. And so I don't know how they stop that. Um, but I, I truly believe if you looked at it, EXP would, would is going to take over those two brands. Yeah, I, w- I would agree with that. And it usually for me, it seems like those are the easiest conversations to have with either Remax or Keller Williams agents. I don't, I, I've not quite figured out why people, um, I, why people continue to go to traditional brokerages like a Coldwell Banker or a Berkshire Hathaway and pay the type of money that they do. I mean, you mentioned uh, uh, they, some of those companies do some relocation. Um, and, and I guess that that would be a reason to do that. But I mean, these companies, these relocation companies now, I mean, by the time you get paid, you're at like uh, 25%, you know what I mean? Because uh, they just take so much money from you. Uh, any idea why people choose to stay at traditional brokerages after after seeing models like a Keller Williams or an EXP? I think it's easy, just like anything else. Uh, it's easy to stay where you're at. It's easy to uh, continue doing what you're doing. It, it was, I mean, it was hard. It was hard for us to change over 130 listings. I mean, it took us two or three weeks, so it wasn't that hard, but there was a lot to do in those two or three week period. And there was, uh, you know, some expenses, not a lot. And so I, I think that's it. And, and I think honestly, uh, there might be some chatter or some, you know, uh, issues out there. And so people won't even listen to the model. I know that's how Kevin Kaufman and Fred Weaver were. They, they heard so much chatter, um, that they didn't really look at the model. Um, so I, and, and that was the case for us. I, I got it shown to us and we didn't look at it. So I think if there are people that are open to it, um, we weren't we weren't unhappy. I, I don't want to say we were unhappy at Remax at all. It was just about what upside did we have. And so we were exploring and open to everything. So I think if if agents are open, what what does it hurt to have a conversation or to to hear it out? It, the worst thing you can do is is waste an hour or 45 minutes watching a webinar or having a conversation with someone you know that's there. Um, and, and that's sort of how we look at things. We'll always take a meeting with a lender or a title company or, or, or whatever, um, because we're always willing to learn something um, or we don't want to pass up on an idea like this. So we're, we uh, take the approach of we're going we're gonna to look at everything that someone presents if it seems interesting. But I think a lot of agents don't do that. Yeah, I would agree with that. And then also, I mean, for you guys, especially you, um, it makes sense for somebody, especially in, in, in your, it, you guys have just, but with your production and, and, and your consistency and your, um, you've created influence, you know what I mean? That, that creates influence out. It has a ripple effect out into the marketplace. And so I think by, just by nature, people are people become curious when somebody like you guys makes a move and they inherently want to ask questions. And who better to go to, you know, than 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 you know than you guys because you know you were actually the ones that you know went through all the hardships or or any challenges and and then did your uh, due diligence. So you, you guys are naturally, I mean, you're attracting people. Are you finding that people are calling you now? Or are they naturally or just act, asking questions because of the influence that you have in your marketplace? Yeah, I mean, that's for sure. Uh, we we have a plan uh, going forward to, to get the story out, why we left, attract people. But so far, everything we've done is on an inbound basis. Um, the, the, the young realtor I met this morning, he reached out to us, saw one of our listings go from Remax to EXP and, and sort of knew our history and, uh, reached out to us. We were on a trip, uh, with a builder client last week and a couple of realtors on that trip reached out to us. So right now we haven't done any outbound. I mean, we've done a couple of these videos and, you know, did a press release and a couple, there's some articles on us. Um, but we haven't really reached out to mu- to many people, a couple people in our very closest networks uh, we might have shot an email to. But for the most part, people saw what we were doing or saw that we made a change, especially after 30 years. Right. There's got to be something to it. Uh, obviously, our, our business wasn't hurting. Um, so I think it was it was a lot about our story, why we would move. And so, yeah, I mean, we're getting a lot of, of inbound interest and questions, which has been great. 
Yeah. Um, it, we've enjoyed that a lot, uh, but we, we do have plans to, to get the story out more, but we're still about 98% done with the transition. So, uh, you know, we haven't put a lot of our plans in, in, in order yet. We haven't done an event or a party or a lunch and learn or anything like that. So, yeah. What is, what does revenue share mean to you and your agents? Well, for us, it's, it's, you know, it's a way we can share this model that we truly believe in. Um, and, and that was a big thing uh, for us coming here is whatever we were going to do, whether it was an independent brokerage or another brokerage, we wanted to believe in what we were quote unquote selling because we're not, we don't like to sell things to people. Um, we like to explain what we saw in it and maybe it's a fit, maybe it's not. And so the revenue share from one perspective is, showing something to agents of how they can get another income stream. Um, it's not completely passive because you're having conversations, but if you're selling real estate, you're having those conversations with people anyway. You're talking to realtors on a daily basis. I mean, I would say every day uh, with me producing, I probably talk to three or four agents. So it's not passive, right? I'm just, but I'm changing the conversation a little bit. Um, educating them on why we change, why this model is attractive. And so, you know, for us, the revenue share is a, is a piece to, to, you know, add another, you know, stream of income for our families. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of people have talked about retirement. I've seen that explained a lot. I mean, for us, it's just, you know, we like to have multiple income streams. We do commercial investing. We have a title company. There's a lot of things we do to create new income streams. And that's precisely the way we look at revenue share is another revenue, another income stream um, for, for us and our family. So I, I think that's how all of our agents are looking at it. What did it mean for recruiting and retention? Uh, recruiting and retention for my agents or people, uh, new EXP people, what, what do you mean? Well, I mean, for like, what is, like, the revenue share piece for us, and I would assume you guys probably thought through this as well. It was, it was an additional layer um, for us to add in that um, that it also had a ripple effect. Not only did it create an opportunity, like you said, for them you. to create passive income, but what did it do for the team? Right? What you offered them something that you couldn't offer them at Remax, correct? Yeah. No, I think, uh, yeah, and, and and that's why I sort of mentioned that like six or eight of the people who are, are buying into, six to eight of our, I guess, eight that are, are not in, in leadership, uh, they saw it as a very good thing and they are excited about it. And so absolutely, our our culture is, is super important to us. Uh, we don't have a lot of turnover. Uh, we've had uh, agents on our team for 10 years. We've had staff on our team for 20 years. Um, and so this was another way for them to have some upside. And so I didn't really look at it that way because we try to really, we spend a lot of time on our culture and making sure everyone's happy, but you're absolutely correct that uh, the way they've reacted to it is going to make them that much happier here. Um, and just give them another opportunity as a, as a team owner, a team leader. Uh, that's what you're trying to do is, is, is make sure that they're successful. And at the end of the day, that means what are they, what are they bringing home or what are they putting in their bank account? Um, that's, that's a big deal, uh, with, with being an agent who has a split, you know, sometimes 50, 50 split, like, uh, a lot of agents, uh, are, and you're having to provide them some sort of value. So this was just another way to provide them value. And, and it's, I think it's worked for, for our team, at least. I mean, our agents are, are loving it so far and they haven't even really started to begin to, to attract people, but they, they see the upside. Right, right. Where do you see this thing going, man? Like for you guys, like, and I'm talking about like, not EXP, but like for you guys, what is the goal now? I, I would assume the dust is starting to settle for you on the transition, like, and you guys are are switching gears into growth mode, right? Where do you, what is the goal for you guys? Where, where are you looking to take this? The, the goal is, and we've got this question, a couple conversations is like, I don't want to focus on revenue share like other teams or agents we're talking to. We're still going to sell a lot of houses and that is our primary goal. Um, you know, 
when my dad uh, left in 13 or 14 uh, on a lot smaller aging count than we have, uh, he was doing 150 million. That was what he did in 13 and 14. And, and this year we'll do 250. So our ultimate goal is to continue to, to do more deals and do more volume. That's not going to change whether or not we were at EXP or the Franklin team brokerage or Keller Williams, wherever. Um, so ultimately that is going to be our primary focus, taking care of clients, and trying to grow every year because you know if you're just stable that's not we're, we're in a growth mentality uh, the, the leaders in our company are all young um andy is is the oldest in his early 40s um uh, on the leadership uh so that's ultimately our number one focus but our our second focus is is spreading this as wide and as far as we can to to one help other agents um you know the for us which is sort of goes in conjunction with with the revenue share is is collaborating with agents like i would never be on a conversation on a podcast with you right now i would have not known you exist without this model <laughs> right. and, that, and that's really cool because i'm probably going to learn something from you and all these other agents i know i will because there's a lot of stuff we don't do well that we've i mean fred and kevin have opened my eyes to so many things that we don't do well that we can improve on and it's a big reason why we've continued to grow. Um, so uh, us sharing the story is obviously, yes, revenue share is gonna, with us sharing the story, we'll attract talent and we'll grow revenue share, but it's a lot more than that. It's collaborating, growing our business, helping younger agents uh, grow their business. And I, and I think this model is so unique that it allows us to do that. So, you know, those are our two big things that we're still gonna focus on is, is talking about this model, doing stuff like you're doing. I think it's great that you're doing this, um, but also our number one goal is to continue to sell houses, and, and we're gonna we're gonna do that. And you know what? There's the, the great thing about that question is there's really no right or wrong answer. The fact that you know you said our focus really is still to go out and sell you know uh, as many houses as we can. You know what I mean? And and then. The, the great part about revenue share and, and uh, company stock is it's all just a bonus, right? You were just selling real estate at Remax and I was just selling real estate at Keller Williams, but we added in these two components that we didn't have before. We never knew what type of impact it would have, not only on ourselves, but on the people that work so hard for us on a daily basis to, you know, to go out and generate leads and, 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 and listings and buyers. Um, so it's it's truly been a life changing, I, I think, uh, event for us. And it sounds like it's had a great impact on your business as well. Well, it, it's a it's a lot of fun as well. I mean, uh, and, and I, I got that question today when I was meeting with that agent I keep referring to is like, what happens if this financial model is not sustainable? Well, first off, it's it's publicly traded. A lot of smart guys on Wall Street um let this ipo and it's a billion dollars so it's it's not just a flash in the pan but say that does happen and in 10 years uh i have to go back to remax i've probably made a lot of money in revenue share and stock in that 10 year period um to pay for my switchover costs back to to remax or, or wherever i go and so there's really no risk from our perspective i mean we had we had to change. Uh, we have four company cars that we get wrapped with Remax stuff. That was probably our biggest expense to change over was two thousand dollars a vehicle. Uh, everything else was some time and effort, but we didn't have a big expense. So when I look at risk as a company owner, it's more about financial risk. Um, and so from us, it's there is no risk. Um, and that's why we ultimately made the decision is we're going to sell real estate no matter where we're at. Um, and now it just gives us another leg, like you said. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's been great and fun and, and I've never, uh, enjoyed talking to so many realtors. Uh, you know, usually you're, you're co-oping with one and they might not be a good realtor on the other side, but now everyone is a, is a potential opportunity to, to share this story with. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. It's sort of invigorated us. Uh, you know, selling real estate a lot is a grind. Um, and this is sort of refreshed uh, that and I'm sure it'll become a grind again. Um, but uh, it's been a lot of fun uh, in the last month. Wow, though, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That is awesome, man. So I, I ask every I usually end. I've got a couple more questions for you, but I usually end uh, with this question. Um, 
so to that agent or that broker or that team leader who's out there listening to us right now or watching us, uh, who's thinking about uh, either changing companies, uh, join EXP, or they're just trying to get additional information on EXP, what, what do you, as Andrew Franklin, what do you say to that person? I would say be open-minded. Uh, there are so many opportunities that you'll miss if you think you know it all um, and you think uh, where you're at is, uh, is the, the end all be all. And so, you know, we explore everything. It's just, I, I think it's a bit of wanting to be curious and wanting to know what else is out there, what our competitors are doing, because we might be able to learn from them. And so we have the mentality of just being open-minded. So, but I, I would say do that, uh, reach out to someone, you know, that is an EXP agent just to have a conversation because, uh, what's the worst that can happen in an hour? You can understand this model if you look at it in an hour. So it's really, I think everyone watching or anyone in real estate has an hour um, to understand and, and see if it's a good fit. It might not be a good fit for everyone. Um, I think it's a good fit for a lot of people personally, um, whether big team or individual agent. Um, but that's the biggest thing is, is what does it hurt to have a conversation? What does it hurt to actually hear someone out? Um, the worst thing that can happen is you get a new friend or a new colleague or a new someone you can talk to if, if you need them in real estate. So that's what we did. And, and I'm glad we did. Uh, I'm really glad we, we were open to it. Um, so that, that's probably my biggest piece of advice is, is, is do a little bit of your homework uh, before you make a judgment. Right. But beware, right? Because once you see it, you can't unsee it. That's yeah. what you see, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's exactly right. So um, I'm curious, man. How can people connect with you if they have questions about EXP or, or you know, or your move or, or it just, I mean, anything? Yeah, I mean, uh, you can reach out on Facebook or our office number is 281-347-2200. You can find any of us on our team on that. Um, you know, uh, our website is www.thefranklinteaminc.com. Um, so we're, we're real estate agents, so we're attached to our phones and we're open to having any conversation. Um, I talked to an agent a week ago, we co-opted with that was already making the move to EXP. So I wasn't going to go in my revenue share group. We talked for 30 minutes on the phone because she wanted to just understand what we saw in it before she completely committed. She was already going sponsored by someone else. And so uh, the cool thing about this model is even if I don't benefit from it, if the company gets bigger and is more successful, I benefit from it. And, right. and that's really a culture that that we saw in this company that that attracted us. And so we're going to we're going to do the same things that that other agents when we were making the move did to us a lot of open door policy and had conversations. So reach out to any of us and and we'll talk to you for as long as you want, um, even if you're planning to go under someone else, uh, because indirectly the company gets bigger, we all do well. That's right, man. Andrew, man, thank you so much. Um, coming from a place of, of servitude and, and just sharing, I so appreciate it. I know you're a busy guy. Um, you have to be selling you know, $250 million worth of real estate. Um, I truly appreciate you being here. I hope that we can connect in New Orleans next month, man. I look forward to, to getting together with you and, and, uh, and, and swapping stories. So thanks again, man. Yeah, Mike, thanks for having me. It's been a blast and I look forward to getting to know you better. I appreciate you having me on here. Absolutely, my friend. Thanks so much. Okay, take we'll care. Talk. All right.